Whoa. That's crazy. Oh, hey, what's up? Check. Uh, not Fire Pro, but... It just swapped it'll... over for me. No longer hosting. Oh. So we have... Tor... Old Harrelson, the, the Swedish Socialist, and Magomed Ashmanov, the Dagestan uh, Radical. Taking on uh, two ball gentlemen, immediately Ido and especially Esposito. No. Challenges for the title, yeah. Yeah. Oops. I think we did Brian Credit Lewis. Uh, let's see. So Magast Magomed is a Dagestan man. Uh, he's very angry. <laughs> he's a Dagestan man. That should be his thing. He's a one man Dagestan. Angry young gentleman. Uh, I like that. I like that Torvald is called Goodface. He really. Uh, I feel. Very good face. I think he's self conscious about that. To be honest with you, and that's. Uh... I mean, I'm not saying we should have a, uh, a hair versus hair match down the line, some either in kickboxing or pro wrestling, but I think it'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, he probably uh, he probably wanted to be as uh, as aerodynamic as possible, pro wrestling, where he's jumping around. I and could I see that. Torval has a lot of interesting uh, techniques that uh, not a lot of people can pull off because they don't believe in uh, socialism. <laughs> and, uh, you know, have, uh, steroids or some other performance-enhancing uh, entity, but it's it's just pure belief in love of socialism. He's he's one of two very open socialists in the league. The other being uh, Aladdin Bell, the son of alt-right by default. Uh, I don't know what you'd call him, a former military man, a Federal Bell, uh, one half of the tag team champions, along with uh, Pyotr Petrov from Russia. It's uh, so those are the only two avowed socialists in here, and that's it's interesting to see how different their styles are. Socialism is not all uniform, you know. I mean, it's a, it's each according to their abilities, and different men right. have different abilities. Yeah, I mean, but these men still pay their dues, that's for sure. Yeah, you know... Uh, uh, those punches, he's a, he's a solid boxer. Yeah, little Esposito, he's, he's quick, he's got good hands. Uh, I don't know if he's got much else going on for him, and uh, especially in the wrestling arena. I think uh, he's a good boxer. He's been a multi-time uh, boxing champion. He's quick, even though he's uh, in his mid forties, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, like like many of the men in this league, they're they're in their four, their late thirties or forties because, or they're in their early twenties and just Give have up. already given up on life. Give up. <laughs> this is this is a sad collection of gentlemen. Absolutely, Magomed uh, rocking that uh, uh, with the Dagestan flag colors on it, uh, just. Just shows how much he loves his homeland. Yeah. Wearing his uh, Sweden colored uh, pants. The country he loved out of uh, Ido and Esposito. I think they might have uh, embraced the full uh, capitalist oh, desires of, uh, of America. And the. Uh, like Bianchi has offered them through Belly Ribbon. Yeah, I mean. Mike Bianche is pretty much a man who has become quite a capitalist. Give up. Uh, you know, he's just so he has he has all of these businesses now. You know, there's there's the SCFL Fight League that airs on Fight Pass. Now you've got the SCFL Pro Wrestling that airs on Twitch. 
Uh, and then th there's there's rumblings of a basketball league starting up, and he's also staffing at, uh, like a school district. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. It's just, you know, that's 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 bike in a nutshell. He's he's a guy who does what he has to do. He's he's definitely always got a scam with him. Yeah. Well, no, well, he's a he's an honorable man. man. But uh, you know he's uh, you know he's got a couple of grifts going on. You know if you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. If you don't believe in the cause, there's really no, not many options. It's either conversion or uh, elimination. Hello, scandalous Murph. How are you doing? Bonito very well. What what uh what are their what would you say their game plans are in terms of And styles, and a lot of times that's what really works in a tank. Game. Get up, you know, keep. Fold's got a bit of a sombo background. He's, he's got some uh, some interesting throws. Uh, not as not as high amplitude clearly as as Torvald. You know, some some basic you know trips and, and takeovers. Um, Decent uh, you know, leg lock submissions. Torvald is is all about high impact. He, he might uh he might gas himself out going for something, but he hits it. And it's gonna be hard to get up from it. Satellite head scissor and then a Yoshi tonic into a, a very near ball. Then uh Torvald and for a double power bomb, so anyone can go this point. One, two. Big. Oh, big reverse Frankenstein for the roll. Their main ideology, uh, I mean, the, the exact specifics are a little different, but the main ide ideology that both can share is the West needs to, to change and get better. 
the the core baseline of, of what these two men believe in. And the method is clearly different, but the you know they, they want the same thing. Yet. They they want the West to change. Sixteen twenty one, a uh, a head and a door of old Princess Pazito. That's what he's known as. Wow. Wow. I mean, I, I had to miss the tail end of that match because of uh, backstage there was a commotion and uh, I wanted to go check it out. And uh, you won't believe the kind of crap that was going on backstage. I, I mean, Ichabod Adams, who is one half of the main event tonight, took a stuffed raccoon and threw it at Discussion Davis when he was coming into the building. Anything to get into your opponent's head is, is you know, fair game. Uh, if, if Ichabod, I've been to the discussion today as who, you know, despite his all his qualifications as a uh, as an amazing fighter, he clearly is not mentally strong to be so terrified of a raccoon that he uh, his hair went prematurely white. So any, anything to really dive into that that fear that deep-seated phobia is is the you know i'm i'm on board with it 100 uh, percent it's, it's dirty but you know what this is uh this is professional wrestling you know <sighs> i am uh... This, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a this is a contendership tournament. So the winner here will probably will on the next show challenge whoever wins between Zoning Zhang and the team of Let Lou and Xylophonus Bianche, known uh, informally, I suppose, as Bike Bianchi's Bianche's fixers. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know why uh, two men as mediocre as that are his fixers but I, I don't know a situation where no one else will tapped them I think I think it originally sprung from the two men uh, feeling disrespected by rap metal in kickboxing and wanted a, a modicum of revenge and with how brutal they they dispatched of the former world champion uh Bike realized he had a, an opportunity uh, to, you know, use these two men problems, and that quickly arose when uh, noted murderer Alex Thompson won a, a hardcore tournament to become number one contender, and they... The Fixers... It was hardcore. The Fixers instantly came in and, uh, and took him out. It was an exploding barbed wire tournament. Yeah. And uh, the fixers came in and, and made sh short work of the. Uh... You know, bike has doesn't bike doesn't have uh, a conniving bone in his body. He just things just happen, and he just kind of uh, he signs off on at literally anything like. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants stuff to get over he doesn't want to deal with stuff he wants to just get it over with 
So, like, for example, uh, Ichabod Adams has a sh title shot tonight. And that mostly happened because he felt that he got screwed over in the the last title fight. And instead of dealing with it, Bike just said, sure, you get a title fight. It was, you know, it, it's not the greatest way to operate multiple businesses, but, it, you know, it, it is what we deal with. So, I mean, that's... I was just saying that's literally how uh, how Xylophonus and Let Lou came about. They were they were sh you know sharing a snack in the in the break room and, and discussing how Rat Metal had punched them uh, into you know near unconsciousness on on several occasions. And you know Xylophonus simply went into Bike's office and said, "Hey uh, hey cousin, um, can we fight Rat Metal?" And he's like, "Sure, whatever, it's fine," and <laughs> just to dismiss them. Yeah. I mean, actually, they're one of the they're one of the sponsors of these shows. You can see their logo on the mat there in the corners. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a busy man. So if you ever see random disjointed tweets on Michael Bisping's account. Uh, it is most likely uh, his fault, just like for many UFC fighters that use the Ali, uh, whatever his name is, just some random bullshit. Yeah, yeah, so Bike is really busy. Well. Yeah. It, it's a canvas, you know what I mean? And, and it, uh, you know, it doesn't Remember surprise that, me that, In uh, addition to being fixers, Let Lou and Xylophonus actually clean the mats in between yeah. fights. They're the, they're the actual ring crew. They take it down and, you know, put it up before the show. They're... Hey, man. Yeah, uh, Wigwam, it doesn't surprise me that he, he took a big-ass barbed wire bump. He is sort of a masochist. Yeah! Wow. No, uh, this is not, indeed, not Call of Duty. Now, do oh. Is, is a is a is a bit of a brawler though. He likes to to you know bite down on the mouthpiece and, and just throw heavy heavy leather. So it's it's not a huge surprise that he's jumping into this, in, in my opinion. No, I mean I feel like uh, like Dubois just wants to land his big punch. Uh, you know he has multiple big punches. That's what he wants to do here. And Wigwam is. You know, he is a masochist, but he's also a bit of a sadist. He just wants to hurt people, you know? Dave, I, I know you've called Wigwam a complete piece of shit on numerous occasions. <laughs> would, you, would you care to uh, delve into that a little bit? You know, this man with his big floppy ears and his... Uh, his demeanor is just, this man could be one of the all-time greats. But instead, he is a complete and utter moron who just, instead of actually using his talents, opts to just be an idiot. He just stands around, makes fun of his opposition. Uh, you know, he doesn't actually try to compete. If he actually tried to compete, he could probably be a force to be reckoned with, but he doesn't do it. I mean, I've seen him occasionally uh, eschew the, uh, the taunting and simply just, you know... Throw his, throw his heavy hands, and you know, he he did. 
Yeah. Did you take the boxing title away from uh, Rat Metal and uh, a yeah. typical uh, uh, Super Chat? Movie, but um, yeah, I agree. He's he's definitely one that uh, it, it's so hard to know what kind of performance you're gonna get out of uh, a live one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a. This is only a, a four-man tournament, so it's not like this is a long, grueling affair. But the fact that they're both beating the crap out of each other with weapons, uh, they're taking barbed wire bombs, they're beating the crap out of each other and bleeding. Uh, this carries over. Yeah, th this carries over. These guys are. These guys are going to be hurt. You know what I mean? They're going to be hurt, and and uh, it, it's going to be. I think it all depends on how the next fight goes. Yeah. I mean, if the referee isn't gonna, gonna do anything about it, why not keep, keep going for it? You know, I mean, that's, that is certainly one way to look at it, but, ah, I mean, there are, yeah. I, I think because it's, you know, it's what they know best and what they're good at. Uh, you know, like swinging weapons at each other. There's certain people involved in this league that are quite good at that, but not everybody has a proficiency in that. And if your fist can do a lot of the damage for you, there's no reason to search elsewhere. And it's probably a pride thing, too. I mean, you think of a guy like Wigwam, who prides himself on being the toughest guy in the room, and that's why he tries to be so nonchalant, thinks he can just finish anybody whenever. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, this is the uh... Absolutely. Um I if uh if this is gonna Well I, I shouldn't say I don't know. It's it's definitely gonna play into the to the later or the, the finals of the tournament because um not not to get too far ahead, but I just don't think that uh, the upcoming Weather Walker versus Freddy Fisher bout is going to be nearly as long. I think, I think Weather Walker's going to put in a lot of big hits on Freddy Fisher, and he's going to be fresh going into it. But, uh, whoever wins this. You know, people have been counting Freddy out for his entire life, and uh, the man makes a mean homebrew and a mean brat. Uh, you know, that, that's got to... He, he knows how to do stuff with his hands, you know what I'm saying? And, I, you know, while both of these guys are doing stuff with their hands, Freddy Fisher is a brawler, and he's willing to take it to anybody. And as we've seen in the cage with four-ounce gloves, uh, he's beaten some pretty high-level competition for a guy who is essentially just some idiot from Fargo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is a good chance. Of, yeah, there is a good chance of somebody getting finished early in the next fight, and then what happens? Oh, wow. I mean, I, you know, we, we're seeing Dubois blocking uh, like big punches here. He's still got, he's still got that fight, but you know, getting hit in the balls is, is some, one of those things that. Uh, how do you prepare for that? You know, in actual fighting, nobody's allowed to hit somebody in the balls. Although people like Ichabod do take their. Uh, you take some, uh, you know, they do things that they probably shouldn't be doing when the ref is looking. Oh, this is, this is a mess. This, this random blonde referee that we have in here is, uh, he, he's, he's gonna have to watch out. He might get, like, some sort of, you know, commutable disease. Who knows what's going on in these guys' bloodstreams.
I don't even want to think about what uh what we can <laughs> scuggling around in this. Yeah. I mean, there's blood everywhere. Uh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful axe bomber. That was, uh, I mean, that's one of those things of like, that was just one man had to go down, you know? Yeah. You know, but somebody has to make these messages. Stanley Smurf just giving that a two and a half stars. Wow. Yeah. Smurf with those uh, new legacy stars. Shout out to those those boys. Freddy is a little bit undersized here, but this is this is his thing, you know, he's always the little guy. You know, he he takes exception to that because he doesn't like people talking about his stout little erection. <laughs> that's that's actually he talks about that backstage, and it's one of those things that, especially in the wake of Al Franken, we have to be careful of these things, and he's already bleeding. Wow. Freddy just won. He's proven himself. I, I know I know Freddie Fisher is, is prone to uh, being upset at men touching his 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 torso, his body. Uh, I've, I've heard it numerous times in, in post fight interviews where he's complained about uh, an opponent, you know, how dare how dare he touch his how dare how dare he touch my body. Can't believe that. Uh, Weather Walker I don't think really has any qualms about uh so it's it's definitely gonna be interesting if if Weatherwalker attacks the torso, attacks the bread basket, that throws Freddy, Freddy Fisher off his game. You know, Freddy is uh, Freddy is a guy that doesn't really know what he's talking about most of the time. This is a man who was a history teacher, uh, social studies actually at a at a junior high school, and uh, he offered a girl a uh, to sample his brat and was suspended indefinitely because of the sexual connotations that he just didn't see because. Truthfully, Freddy is just a guy who's just trying to, trying to, you know, make a name for himself as a brewer and a, I don't know what you call a person who puts meat into a sausage casing, but he, well, no, he's not, tubesman. yeah, he's a tubesman. He's not, he's not cutting up any of this meat. He's just getting, he's just, he's just collecting meat, putting it in a grinder and then putting it into a tube, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We're running out of glass tubes in the ring, which is that you know th that says something about what's going on here. And plus, the the ring has to be a little abrasive too, because we just had the the ring crew out there scrubbing it things down with bleach. So they have some open wounds here, and bleach stings like hell. I, I this is. Uh, somebody needs to tell Xylophonus and let Lou not to use bleach anymore. No. No. Uh, Murph brings up a good point. How can Mike pay for all the light dudes? Spend? I believe the answer is he sends Xylophonus and let Lou out to, to malls and office supply stores. They just rummage in the dumpsters for any discarded uh, fluorescent light tubes. Yeah, they also just take random ones down from the backstage area too, and hope that they'll be replenished without anybody thinking anything of it. Uh, 
There's not a lot of money involved in this league. Uh, there's, there's just not. That's why we're on uh, Twitch.tv along with other great promotions like Wrestle Circus and uh, I don't know who else does it anymore. Triple A. Hood Slam. Hood Slam's on uh, Oh, Hood Slam's Twitch. on Twitch. Uh, that's actually good company for, for the SF, SEFL boys. You know, it's just one of those gentlemen's agreements things in pro wrestling. Yeah, I mean... Well, that's... You know, after 14 million people par uh, pirated their shows, who knows? <laughs> wow, this is... Uh... You know, Freddy, Freddy with the... He's really... I mean, his favorite pro wrestler was Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's why you're getting Luth as press. That's why he tries to finish with a stunner. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he tried the Luth as press there. He didn't do the punches to follow up. He's kind of kind of wishy-washy on that front. But uh, the Weather Walker is just starting to brutalize him now. And this is where things are, might get interesting. You know a lot about Freddy Fisher. I'm too familiar. I just know Weather Walker is a large man who is... Oh. A rich history of oh. severely injuring opponents. Jason, oh, yeah. can you enlighten me a little bit about Weather Walker? He's he's used to he's used to getting blood sprayed all over him when he makes his sausages. Well, uh, whether whether walk or not, would it go? Out? Yeah, it, it's. <laughs> I, but you know he had. Whoa. That that was. I mean, Freddie Fisher ha must have some sort of concussion here. I. Uh, you know he's going for a submission, and I just uh, I give him all the credit in the world. But Weather Walker, this is the man who hurts people. He has he has ended just about ended careers. Captain White was in a coma after getting elbowed in the back of the head from him and knees flying knee when he was yeah you know it, it, it changed his life forever. Uh, he also uh, oh. retired Chief Steak Supreme from professional fighting by concussing him so hard. It, it's Weather Walker. Weather Walker has done some incredible things with four ounce gloves. And uh, he's looking to build that legacy here in professional wrestling as well. Oh. Kind of like Murph's idea, but uh... yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, Freddie, Freddie, no finesse here, no big move to do it. He just throws him into the, it throws him into the boards. You know, he's. Uh, but Weather Walker, he's he's right back into it, you know. He's not he's not phased by much, is he? I mean, this match is almost going as long as uh, the previous one did. Oh my God, that that full Nelson suplex! I somebody should. Uh, Freddie is, is more guts than brains right now. This is. Uh, he looks very confused. Uh, he was looking around very confused in the ring. Uh, this is... The, the referee needs to think about this. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Uh, who would have thought that would happen? I mean, we thought Freddie Fisher was dead in the water. And uh, that, that, that Olympic slam out to the barbed wire was just... Uh, I, this man is... This is a 
gutsy performance by a little man. I I mean Weatherwalker at this point should just try to finish the Murder is an interesting question that I don't have the answer to. Are the refs here even sanctioned by any governing body? I didn't think no. so. With the bare minimum of requirements are being met here. There's the there's There's a there's a hack doctor out there somewhere. Like you know, it's he's watching from backstage, but he's mostly there for the free tickets. He's he's barely stitching people up. I have Murph confused with another uh, online friend, but I, I said I think I might have Murph confused with another online friend of mine. But I think he might be actually, or at one point was a sanctioned judge in the state of Mississippi <laughs> for another person. He, he very well could. I mean, this is the second time that he's done this move. The... Gross. <laughs> yeah, he, he really wants this. He's a man of hoppy beers and, you know, pretty big sausages, and he's just taken a beating. Does, does Freddy Fisher ever boil his brats in, or his sausages in his beer? Uh, he's... Oh, he's tried it. Wow. No. No, I mean, he just... You know, that's how beat up these guys are, to where Freddy Fisher jumping onto this man and laying on top of him and bleeding into his face, that's all, that's all he needed. And that was... Uh, I mean, you know, Weatherwalker did a lot of beating, a lot of pounding at the end there, but, you know, he was hurt too from earlier on in the match, and he just wasn't showing it. The match was 17 seconds shorter than the opening match in this tournament, which... Three, real. I mean, the 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 Olympic slams and the uh, was it an overhead uh, belly to belly that sent him in the bar bar the first time? Uh, it, it was a it was an overhead uh, throwing. You know, like, Wigbomb took, oh god, like, Wigbomb took damage, but, you know, Freddy, Freddy's been out on those boards, what, four times now, or something like that, like, this, this is, uh, I, I don't know, I, I feel like this referee needs to, needs to get his stuff in order, and, and not, I mean, you know, there's a certain point where you have to be a human, you know, you have to have empathy for these people. And Wigwam is, I mean, I mean Freddy is going from fight, fighting one monster to another. I mean, these, these like, mounted headbutts? This is just, he's trying to hurt him at this point. Well, <laughs> he's a confusing man. He's a confused man, too. A lot of violence going on in this match already, and it's it's very much one-sided. I, I haven't seen Freddy do anything of value. 
I mean, he's getting hit in the balls, he's getting kicked in the face. Wow. And, and then just as I start saying that, Freddy, with a, Freddy reverses and he goes for the big backdrop suplex. And then he hits the move that he won the previous match with, but it didn't didn't finish the job here too soon, you know? Uh, one has to wonder if Wigwam, uh, you know, if he's going to peter out here against a guy like Freddy. Freddy, you know, he came back, oh my god. The big, the big stunner by Freddy. I mean, I clearly thought he had no chance against Weather Walker, and uh, he proved me wrong. Yeah. Dramatically. Uh, I think his biggest chance is to take advantage of how dumb Wigwam is, and how <laughs> prone Wigwam is to just, uh, you know, getting a little full of himself and, and celebrating a little too early. Yeah. As, as we saw, you know, he, he landed a big slam, and, and instead of going for a, a pinfall, he decided to, to show off his biceps. That's, uh, you know, the man does have an That's, impressive physique, but at the same time, uh, you're fighting a professional here, even if he is a professional social studies teacher. He's a professional at something. Well, Wigwam, well, yeah, you know, he's indefinite suspension, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, Freddy's already hit the start there. He's already hit his big move. He's, uh,. He's done some damage, and that's... You have to remember, Wigwam also took some damage last time. So he might be... He might not be bleeding right now. He might have gotten his, you know, Vaseline on his face. Yeah. 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 Oh. I... If, if Freddy can pull this off... Uh... I don't know. I, this this would be this would be quite a Cinderella story. I think all it was that the uh, Wigwam's super glue or hot glue or whatever he chose to use had a little bit longer to set, but it, it wasn't enough to, to keep everything oh. closed. So yeah. Good. Freddy, Freddy was just using Vassal Vass take care of cuts as well as the super glue does. And we learned that from Sabu, you know. You know, if Wigwam would take this thing seriously, it would be over by now. But he's too busy flexing his muscles, you know? And you have to think that Wigwam, especially, is not known for a man with a gas oh. tank. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, we had these people sign. These people did sign waivers, but uh, wow. That's the Axe Bomber. Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, he's bringing back the old Hulk Hogan Lariat, you know? He's making it work, man. Ah, 12 minutes and 48 seconds. You know, and that whoever wins the whoever wins the title match, that's that's a that's a. T you know, he beat two he beat two other tough guys here. So uh, now we move on to one of our four world title qualification uh, four ways of the night, and. Uh, the, on the next show, the four winners will go on in another qualification match to see who wins, uh, to see who gets to fight the winner 
of tonight's world title match between Discussion Davis, the world champion, and Ichabod Adams, a complete piece of shit. Guys who uh, did decent in the uh, in the original world title tournament. Um, actually, a few people who maybe didn't get a chance to, to participate just uh, due to scheduling conflicts. Um, you know, in the first first match, we have a uh, Corvus Rogers representing the Sons of Anger. The fragrant Tanaka. Um, He's just a Japanese guy. He's representing a people but... who, who dislike fake Japanese people. Yeah. Who is, uh, good. Who is Canadian, which not allowed in, in most civilized societies. And then boxing uh. Bianchi, uh, representing Team Belly Ribbon. So it's 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 pretty heavily loaded with uh, with, with top talent. Uh, and then in, in the settings, uh, we have to remember first fall uh, wins this one. Absolutely, there was a there was a uh, a three way match between uh, discussion Ichabod and, and former champion Chucky Murphy that was supposed to be a uh... your uh, yeah. what kind of battle royal did you pick? If it's a normal battle royal. There's uh, go back. You're gonna have to go back and redo it. Yeah. Yeah. The the issue stemmed from. Uh, Ichabod thinking it was it was a first a first, first win battle win. royal. Yeah. Yeah. He defeated. All right. And then we quickly rolled up by di by discussion, um, unbeknownst to him. After much protest, Mike Bianchi has has instituted that all uh, matches need to be one fall to a finish. So, uh, this is, uh, yeah, he's resting. Uh, so I guess the question here, this is a, this is a tough one. First of all, means that any time somebody goes for a pinfall or submission, uh, one of the three, uh, one of the two other men has the ability to break that up or break it up and quickly pin or try to submit the other guy. I mean, these matches are chaotic. Yeah. I feel like conventional logic would say Gorvis or boxing would have an upper hand here, but Fragrant Tanaka's had a good run in uh, kickboxing. Credit Lewis is a multi-time world champion. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot there's a lot going on in this match. Give up. You know, it's it's gonna be interesting to see. It is. It's it's really a matter of these matches are chaos. They they're intended to be chaos, and it's not always going to be the best man wins. It's going to be the craftiest man who wins. Give up. Give up. And I'm not sure who the craftiest man in there is. To be honest with, you. it might be Gorvis. It might also be Fragrant. Uh, Credit Lewis is a little bit straightforward. He's a little bit, uh, you know, he's Canadian. He he likes to play by the rules. And boxing is uh, he's, he's tough. He's the owner's brother. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean that that would be the easiest road to victory would be to critical somebody and just knock him out right there. And that would uh, secure him the win and put him on for the main event of the next show, uh, where he'd have to fight another three men for a chance to become world champion. Uh, challenge world champion. I mean, we put these guys through the ringer to, to get a shot at the title, uh, except for Ichabod for some reason. <laughs> I think it's because well, he, he keeps he, threatening he litigation. The most. Yeah, he, he's threatening litigation, and uh, you gotta keep that kind of guy happy. He really does. Uh, he has, if you want, you can find him on Twitter. I, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it at all. Uh, it is uh, Ichabod SCFL420. And uh, we, uh, yeah, I mean, he, uh, 
He's not a good person. I'm actually looking at his Twitter feed right now, and he has a he has a story about his uh, Thanksgiving dinner that is terrible. Seeing a lot of uh, disorientation for for highlight. They're they're players. trying to wear each other down, which is interesting. There's a lot of big impact stuff. You're seeing a lot of like headlocks. You're seeing a lot of like leg locks. Uh, these guys are trying to wear their opposition down instead of just beat the crap out of them. And uh, usually, I would be all for that in a singles competition, but. This, these kind of matches requires a different set kind of thinking. And that's why I'm, I'm not sure I see somebody like a Credit Lewis who's very straightforward uh, pulling off this. Does he have the wherewithal to do it? A Gorvis would, and, and, and the same goes for boxing with big, you know, his big punches. So it's, uh, I feel like... Uh, he's a boxer. He's also he's also more of a street fighter than anything else. Uh, he, he grew up in a, a poor family in, in Atlanta, and you know, has, has had to you know do whatever he could to, to keep food on the table um, from from a very early age, and that's resulted in a lot of uh, scraps, squabbles, altercations out on the streets, and that's made him be a uh, the tough individual he is today. Yeah. Champion. Uh, wow. <laughs> you know that's that's the kind of money that you can get. You can get a nice apartment, a nice rental, a nice like leased vehicle from uh, Philly Buick. But, you know, like tree level fun guy. Yeah, some of them are substitute teachers, like, it's... Yeah, and then you gotta... Wow. Wow. Oh. He, that is exactly what we thought he would do. Yeah, I mean, that was... I, relatively quick too, uh, 11 minutes. Yeah, I mean, this guy is... He's been world champion. Uh, he's... He's a Rocky... Uh, for what it's worth. Uh, he's... Every time he wins, it's, it's a new Rocky story all over again. Yeah, you know, this man, he's been around since the beginning of the league. He's taken a lot of damage. I mean, he's he's one of those guys that Weatherwalker put out of action for a long time. Uh, he's had weight fluctuations. Uh, he's found Jesus and then lost Jesus. He's gone through a lot, a lot of stuff, you know? You know, this man, anything to not write 
his next book. <laughs> well, he doesn't. He doesn't have to anymore after that at tournament. That's true. That's true. He he's no longer responsible for finishing uh, Game of Thrones, uh, Song of Ice and Fire. That now relies solely on the shoulders of Nate Johnson, a cop and the president of, and, and the president of the United States, who has elevated enzyme liver enzymes from Jonesy. It's. <laughs> A lot of weird side bets. <laughs> what? It was Highlander rules. Uh, Nate pinned uh, Donald Trump, of all people, to to steal the presidency. <laughs> Which? If you do this or or watch another Jets game, and he can't put himself through that again. Yeah. <clears throat> He, he does a lot of uh, live journal commentary on his sports watching, and that's a, pretty much all he's got left now. Yeah, I don't blame him. So, uh, who do you guys have as a favorite? I think, uh, I think you have to consider Philly, but I think until Robert has really... Uh, he's... he's Shown a lot of gumption. Until uh, Robert's definitely a lot of good, good fights out there. Yeah, uh, algorithm Schneider is. Yeah, algorithm is complete. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's uh, that's some bias right there. I quite hear the question, so I'll uh, I'll refrain from answering. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he won't. No. I, I, but you never know. But uh, he's also... The last time we saw him in the kickboxing ring was Ichabod Adams just savaging him with body kicks and curled up in a ball that was sad. You know, it, but then again, the last time we saw Algorithm was really sad too, so... Who knows? I mean, as you've probably been able to tell by watching Algorithm, he does a lot of completely worthless offense that just... Uh, he needs to think things through more. While until Robert is sitting here working him with the body punches, uh, he's going for like the back breakers, he's, he's focused on that midsection. Uh, you know, he really should be focused on the neck and head of somebody who's been concussed about 14,000 times. I'm not sure what... He could be. I'm not sure what Philly, uh, Philly is not a high flyer. I don't know why he keeps going up top and trying to do stuff. Uh, that last... Yeah. He does, you know, I just like... Al had their shot to him and, uh, they had them vaccinated. His, his distant cousin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, this seems to be his MO. And, and algorithm, I mean, that's this is algorithm's thing, too. He went up there, that big knee to the back of the head, then lands uh, a tope con giro on him. It's just, he needs, he needs to go for the finish instead of trying to wow people. I mean, this is exactly why he ended up as a man with multiple terrible concussions as a fighter. He's just not, you know, his parents named him Algorith, the hope that he would do something admirable with his life, and he's just, he got hooked on meth. Uh, Philly keeps going for this diving fist drop. It's crazy. Yeah. That that was a crazy spot. And then 
Philly, Philly with that big full Nelson suplex. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I, well, I mean, Murph, you have to you have to realize that the the Philly the Philly gym is connected to the dealership as well. So you can you can get a you can get a membership at his gym and also get a you know like a free rental car once a month. It's it, it's quite a dealership. Well, let me pass the headset to him. Let's, let's catch up on with him here. Oh, God damn it. Whoa. Whoa. What, 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 what's going on here? Uh, good evening, hero. I'm, I'm glad you could join us. Uh, yeah. Hit him with the uppercut, Philly. Oh god damn it! I'm I, I'm watching fucking morons out here, and, and I don't know. It's like it's like watching cheesesteak go through school all over again. That kid couldn't get a good report card to save his goddamn life. I I don't know who this Batman is. Uh, we don't have that, uh, we don't have that HBO stuff. We have, uh, we have Cinemax. Um, I would have to say it's, it's... It's Cinemax! It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the nudies! Yeah, it's, it's... Well, yeah, who doesn't? What are you watching TV for, otherwise? Oh, god damn it. God damn uh, right, I gotta... I gotta go take care of this fucking idiot, alright? Uh, I'll be back. At some point. I don't... Uh, bye. I am shocked. Algorithm? Am I... Am my eyes deceiving me, or did Algorithm win a match? I'm that I, I'm shocked. I mean, I would say it's got to be a uh, not ask me, but debuting wrestlers Fortran Cobalt and ties in Ishikawa who interested to get involved. Two gentlemen who uh, no longer compete in kickboxing due to. An accumulation of injuries. Fortran Cobalt is a is a young man who um, got really into the Matrix um, and fully believes that uh, intelligence uh, is is coming to save humanity and, and he just really believes in you know the idea of a perfect AI uh, Kaizen Nishikawa is simply a salaryman who uh, loves bicycling loves his cardio kickboxing class and has a, a hard head it's just very hard to uh, to knock him out Has he not arrived at the arena? Uh, well, I mean... I mean... <laughs> I, I think, I think I Fun Adams could fill in. I think 
I think Tapa's tempo <laughs> up for it. I don't think he's booked for this card. No, he doesn't look to be booked. He's he's like done his stamp. He's not booked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, Ichabod's out there tweeting now. So this is we're we're entering chaos now. All I know is that they really hate Belly Ribbon. That's all I know about them. <laughs> and they're not they're not brothers either. This is just it's like in Thailand where you take your gym name as your last name. Uh, and uh, I, I got word on what happened to uh, Kaizen Ishikawa where uh, he didn't know where to go for the wrestling. So he went to the actual Belly Ribbon Fight Camp gym. And uh, he's currently there alone. <laughs> standing in the, in the parking lot wearing his overcoat and, and really confused. Uh, we, we have to send somebody to go get him, but yeah. we're not sure if that's going to happen tonight or not, so... <laughs> I mean, Tapas Tinko is a, is, a, is a former High Life player, he's used to having, uh... Pelotas um, hurled around his head at in excess of, I believe, 7,000 miles an hour. He's he's used to danger. Yeah, you know, I, I can't, you know, High Lie is a very different. I've been to a live High Lie, High Lie game before, and it was exciting. Uh, people were getting balls whizzed at their heads. This guy, you know, it, he could have a career in pornography, too, with all the balls whizzing at his head. He's, yeah, you know, it's... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's wearing pink. You know, this guy. This guy knows what's up. And the the Missouris are brutal bastards here. I mean, I don't want to say it, but thugs. thugs. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's a that's a loaded that's a loaded word in, in Trump's America. But I don't disagree with you. He's okay. He's, you know, these guys, these guys like blood. You know, they like, they like their own blood. <laughs> the Missouris wanted this. The Missouris wanted this because they wanted to highlight how crazy they are. They wanted, they wanted to get the attention of Belly Ribbon and, and show them that this is what they're waiting for them. I mean, Belly Ribbon, they they have a target painted on their tummies, not just Ribbon. Thing is, I had heard that heard Kaizen was was a little disappointed he hadn't been booked for a couple of the past events and was hoping to make a make a name for himself one way or the other and he can't even go to the right arena it's it's a you know but he did make a name for himself as the guy who went to the right place <laughs> you know but like that's, that's, but but that's not that. the kind of name that Mike Bianchi's gonna gonna be putting on, on next week's talk yeah but know? let's be real about Mike Mike isn't thinking this through he's not gonna remember that he's he's, he's not gonna remember any of this like, he, he barely, like, he'll probably just give his brother a title shot, just at, instead of putting him in a four-way, because that's... Mike doesn't think these things through anymore. Who's in his mind? What? 
I mean, these men. Are... There's not yeah. one of these men involved in this league that haven't had multiple concussions. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it, this is a forged and fire tag team experience, you know? It's, it's definitely something where, you know, uh, it's Ooh. a St. Crispin's Day style, you know, my my brother in blood uh, situation. I mean, one has to think if they can beat these guys in their signature brutal match. Oh, I can't even look. I can't even look at him right now. Uh, the, but... <laughs> Yeah, this is. I mean, we're seeing we're seeing weapons going everywhere. We're seeing blood squirting all over the place. Uh, this is. I I, I the, we do have you know we do have you know new tag team contenders, but at the same time you have to think: Are these guys next in line if they can beat the Missouris? No, absolutely not. Uh, there's, you know, there's some give and take involved here. Uh, you know, and I gotta give credit where credit's due. Mr. Bianca is calling it down the middle. Uh, you know, but he, this is also not a conflict of interest kind of match for him. I don't, I don't believe that uh, sledding Bianca really is aware of the Missouri's disdain for yeah. Bella Ribbon. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, this is... I, I wouldn't be shocked if Mr. Bianca goes down at some point in this match and ends up bleeding. That's gonna hurt. <laughs> it's, it's even worse considering the fact that Fortran had to, uh, to reti essentially retire from kickboxing due to a uh, mistake in a, uh, a severe uh, concussion delivered by Wigwam Hatanabe. Ah, uh, wow. Well. Well, that's the kind of oh. <laughs> that, that, the fact that these guys are so instinct that they both pointed at their heads at the same time. Wow! Wow! Ooh. This is I. This is <laughs> these guys are perhaps maybe we've underestimated them as a tag team and haven't really given them the. <clears throat> Bike, bike is oh, bike is always in the middle of almost litigation. You know, it's that's 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 part of this. Uh, th these two guys, you know what though? These two strapping lads just power bomb both of these guys, double team style. Uh, you know, they're they're trying, and, and we get another. <clears throat> I know this is wow. I I didn't think we'd be seeing this. And, and poor Kaizen has once again lost his slot. <laughs> because he, he did it to himself. He just... You know, he's used to taking the, the Metro in Japan, and he just doesn't know about this driving of his own stuff. It's just not working out for him. The issue is, is when you present when you present Kaizen with too many options, he gets a little flustered. He's just a salary man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's so hurt. Oh god! And it's just like going. I you gotta give him some credit. That flawless AI is is probably uh, chugging along really badly now. 
He's, uh, somebody's got to reprogram him after tonight. Yeah, I'm noticing that Maximo is really wielding this chair with malice. And then, oh my god, the barbed wire. Like, this is... Uh, I guess this is the name of the game in this kind of match, but... <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, and, and the Missouris are just, they're fearless. Did you see uh, Maximo there was just uh, taunting him, telling him, come on, and then he got the drop kick, and he doesn't care. He's getting, he's getting an elbow push in his face. He doesn't care. Like, you know, he knows that his partner's going to come through with that barbed wire bat like he does. It's just, I don't know. Whoa! That beautiful sliding elbow. He's got a lot of power in his arms. He's he, the hurling that Pelota in his in his former highlight days. It's it's really unmatched at times. Um, and it's it's I'm impressed he was able to to withstand so much blood loss. To be honest. You know, I think at this point we that Bike would have to, but you know, <laughs> Bike is uh, Bike. Uh, you know, Bike Bianca would have to consider that, but Bike Bianca is also uh, Bike Bianca, and he's not the greatest of commissioners. I mean, it's it's as a tag team. I think they've they've definitely become closer than they ever expected. Um, as far as forged by fire, as far as becoming closer to a, a title contention, it's it's tough considering there's there's so many options or, or so many available weapons in that type of you know landmine match, not available in you know a, a straight up that you know how much benefited them, how much you know. Did they have to? Did they have to push through? Fight. I think they'd have to show their their medal in a, a standard tag match, perhaps with the the loser of the either the yeah. match coming up tonight or the uh, or the Edo Esposito team who lost. Yeah. Fight. yeah, I mean this is. Uh, I, I'm interested here in this qualifier. Because this is, uh, Rat Metal is one of the greatest champions of all time that we've had. And uh, Karate Hendrix. Yeah, Karate Hendrix is a multi-time champion himself. Uh, he hasn't always been the most popular, though. And then, uh... <clears throat> yeah, he's had a hard time holding on to that title. Garden Green, former champion as well. Uh... Not not the most decorated, but uh, you know, for a forty-five-year-old vegan, he looked pretty good. And October I'm... Schmidt, is, uh, you know, he's a guy. Uh, he's he uh, he's done some tough fights. He's definitely the dark horse in this match. These other three men are a lot more distinguished. Yeah. Yeah, I mean he's still. I mean he he he's always living. He's still wearing his whistle right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know he's. Yeah. 
I mean, he's, he's definitely proven himself a very capable in kickboxing, even though he, he doesn't really uh, you know, use the, uh, the kick part of kickboxing. Um, yeah, he's very punch-oriented. And when it gets to, to wrestling, you know, he really you know, harkens back to his high school wrestling days. There's a lot of you know, slams and, uh, you know, unique kind of combinations that I think a lot of people aren't really used to, you know, the, the twister or the... You know, quote unquote wrestling guillotine he likes to em employ um, it's just something that not a lot of people uh, train a lot for which yeah. I think is, is what's helped him you know it's interesting that you see some teaming double teaming going on against him I think these guys know that he's a threat he's the biggest threat honestly and I think they uh, there's also something in play here where he's not wearing shoes Five and it's kind of gross <laughs> you know yeah you know it's yeah, I mean, uh, you know, th these people are, uh, you think about, I, I mean, it's, it's a ballsy move after all the glass and blood that's been in this ring tonight, uh, the bleach that's on the on the mats from uh, Xylophonist and uh, Let Lou. It's the glass. I'm, I'm pretty sure Xylophonist and Let Lou have a, a, a lit roller they just roll across the ring a few times to pick up any shard. They actually, uh, they actually wrap Let Lou in, like, tape. You know, like two-sided two -sided tape, tape yeah. and they roll him through the ring. <laughs> it's really something to witness. Uh, we should really air that live sometime. But maybe not because it's kind of gross too. I mean, the thing with Rap is he, he doesn't wear shoes because he's he said uh, it brings him closer to Earth. And normally he you know he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who, who's into all that stuff. But uh, you know when when he gets a couple of hallucinogenics into his, his bloodstream. He really, uh, he really starts believing in you know, Mother Gaia and all that weird. Do you think? Do you think that? Do you think that Rat could be good friends with Garden Green, as they're both kind of hippies? I mean, I, I think wow. so. Uh, Karate with he landing his big finish, that big spin kick on two on fucking Garden Green and Rat Metal, and yet. You know, the, the that's how these matches work. October Schmidt was right there. Yeah, he he's been hurt a lot in his, in his life. But he's pretty 45 years old. Look at him. Look at him. Pretty good run as the uh, the banner type banner champion though. Can yeah. uh, just keep that up. Uh, for those unaware, the Banger Championship is a uh, kickboxing world title that uh, you're not allowed to block. So it's uh, it, it, only the strong can survive. It's, I mean, there, there's there's a few slips and a few you know kind of lunges, but it's it's mostly whose chin is strongest and who's who hits hardest the quickest. Yeah, you can get out of the way of a strike, but you can't put your hands up to protect yourself. It's very much just about who gets who can handle the most damage. Absolutely. And right now, I don't know who's handling the most damage. These guys are all pretty much getting beaten up here. Yeah, but you know what? Anybody can steal these things, as we saw. You know, that's karate is... For a guy as unpopular as he is, he is a very flashy guy in there. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, this is a lot of pun these big punches. And, like, this is, you know, you can see that these guys have a background in, in, in combat sports. October Schmidt really getting hurt bad. This is, uh, you know, like, his chances are dwindling with each passing moment. But the nature of this is that he could feel a win. Oh god. Oh. I mean it's not looking like this. But you know what? Somebody has to pin him. That's you know, that's the name of the game here. Or try to tap him out. I think he'd probably submit in seconds if somebody put him in a hole. And Rat does have that hole. Wow.
what's gotta happen is kind of what we're seeing. Someone, someone's gotta basically throw out of the ring and then go for a quick pin if, as quick yeah. as they can. Oh, October Schmidt with his one two. They're just not letting him get anything off here. Crazy. That very well could be, I mean, that big, he just, I mean, that, that suplex that he threw in the corner. October right. Schmidt is just taking a brutal beating. This is not, me. oh, and he just took the one, two from Rat. Uh, this is, uh, very foolish. Wow. I'm going for an ill-timed, uh, spear. Yeah. I wonder. Wow. I mean that that is the kind of thing I'm I'm surprised that he survived that. Uh, they they've all taken damage here. That's the kind of thing that could end the match in a heartbeat. <clears throat> I would have thought uh, Schmidt would have would have tried to break that. Uh, no, I'm trying to look, but he just. He's so tired. He's so confused. I mean, he just took that big Carolyn Russian lift on the head. Uh, he's he's hurt, you know, but he's still going blow for blow. With rat. I gotta give him credit. No, there's no reason anymore with him. He's just this is instinct. This is this is this is a track. This is a guy who's all about track and field, and he's just he's just running. He's just that high. You know? He doesn't, he doesn't have shin splints. Wow. My god. Karate Hendrix just crushes his dreams yet again. Like. <laughs> with, with such a shitty little leg. And then, and then the two strongest guys beating up on the littlest guy is just... It feels perverse. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel like a good thing. I, you know... It's really interesting that they just kind of disposed October corner when he was garbage. <laughs> and, and you know, once again, like, they're kind of like, Rat is really going for that hold on karate. He knows that karate is a kick guy. He's not, there's no ground game here. He doesn't defend submissions well. He, he's, he's a smart fighter. He's just, uh... <laughs> Man, I can't even believe I, that the rare big senton from Rat Metal he goes for the big stretch, but it's, uh, you know, once again, October Schmidt kind of ruins things, like, you know, <laughs> going for that, going for that pinfall at the same time. It very well could be. What? That, oh, that, shit. that that stack suplex was insane. This is oh my god. <laughs> well, remember, remember that. Gonna be a uh, let's get out the big parachute day at the engine. Remember, he's got twenty of his students in this arena right now cheering for him, and he doesn't let them down. Getting, he's getting double teamed left and right, and he's still, he's still going, and it's just. These guys aren't slapping thighs, you know. This is this is this no. <laughs> this is legit. These guys are hitting each other. They're very snug. As yeah. What to call it. There's a reason Rat Metal is wearing gloves. Yeah, he needs to to protect his little knuckles, basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's all those gloves are for, guys. They're, they're for... October is, uh, he really wants to make a name for himself. 
Yeah, he's, he's doing he's doing some big slap. He took that. Oh my god! Wow. The the finish to that was pretty incredible. I mean, uh, I don't even know what to say. I mean, uh, Karate Hendrix hit his big his finisher, and then Rat Middle. Oppor opportunist, opportunist. <laughs> uh, David Bixen span of, uh, of former Gawker property, Deadspin. That, is, that was the longest uh, match so far. Don't forget that there's also a hardcore title bout. And a uh, tag, tag team fight. Hmm. Correct. I mean, uh, these guys, members of the alt-right, uh, you know, a former former military man uh, teaming up with a, a Russian who claims that he was a part of the KGB and claims that uh, his sister was the girl that was involved with the Donald Trump P-tape and that it was actually his bed that it happened on, which is a conflicting report from the Steele uh, dossier, which said it was in an upscale hotel room that was once occupied by the Obamas. But, uh, who knows, you know? I mean, you have to think that uh, Petrov is at least Russian and might actually know what's happening in Russia at some point. Maybe. Technically, a Dagestan, a, a, a Slavic, then a uh, more Caucasus mountain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, Federal Bell. Federal Bell is a proud military man. He's, uh, you know, he was involved in not a war per se, uh, but Operation Desert Storm. And, uh, you know, the main thing he took away from his time in the Middle East were his sexual exploits uh, that involved impregnating a woman in uh, Iraq and uh, her giving birth to their son. And of course, this was 1992. And while Federal Bell had been in the Middle East for quite a considerable amount of time, he did not know any names of people other than Mohammed. So the, the recently released Walt Disney animation feature film, Aladdin had came out and uh, he decided that that was, since he only knew the names Mohammed and Aladdin, that Aladdin was a better name. And uh, his son Aladdin was born from that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> Folks were live. <laughs> this, MMA. And we have clones somehow. <laughs> Good. 
Петр Петров. Yeah, and that's the other thing. A lot of guys to get in. I'd almost petition Bike Bianca to create a trios title because there's just so many people and, you know. No, that's, that's three. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I mean, I think, I think there's a lot of possibilities. I mean, we can have titles for uh, Trio, we can have titles for Atomicos, we can have titles for, you know, Hardcore Tag, uh, uh, Singles. It's not like we don't have a lot of Supplifurous titles in the uh, cage fighting. I mean, you know, the Sharia Law title, probably the one of the greatest and most confusing things Bike Bianca's ever done. MMA title. So, uh... You have to wonder, these guys who've already fought one tonight, if they're at a disadvantage going up against a rather polished team of the alt-right. Hot, but it's been a while, and it's, it's been... <clears throat> It seems like it's been a long time before since Bell and Petra have been fought, so I think we might have a little bit of rest on them. Uh, you know, that could be. I mean, uh... And from what, I'm, uh, from what I've been told, Petrov has been working on uh, a series of different maneuvers uh, because he, you know, he really wants to up his game here in SCFL. Hmm. Now you cut out there. Yeah, you cut out. Uh, you know, it, it could be, but it also, uh, you never know. The, you know, the alt-right has been, uh, has been thwarted a lot in the United States. And, uh, yeah, while Russia, there's still questions of what they, what Russians actually were able to do to, you know, impact yeah. this country. Uh, he Petrov's impact has been, without a doubt, measured. <clears throat> uh, you know, you will note here that uh, while these two men fight clean, Petrov and yeah. Federal Bell are a little bit dirtier in their fight style. We're seeing some eye rakes. Uh, we're gonna see some low blows, probably. Uh, these guys, uh, they're willing to do what it takes. And I think that when it comes to matches like this, uh, that is a big deal. Really, cu really cutting out there, bud. I think we need to get you a new, uh, we need to get somebody in production to uh, fix your headset. Okay, um... But it's, it's, oh, beautiful back fist to spin send Petrov out of the ring. So as far as Magomed's fighting style, like I said uh, earlier in the night, it's, it's you know, heavy Sambo influence, a lot of thrill. Um, and a good deal of, uh, you know, spinning kicks, spinning back fists, uh, utilizes, um, a more traditional kickboxing style in, in, in cage fighting. As, as far as in the wrestling ring, though, he's he's definitely focused on, on high impact, high risk, high reward techniques that uh, you know are can land, but they're just uh, they're they're very hard to pull off. Uh, you know, I, I'm most curious about his garb. What what is his ring gear? What is this? Uh, is it traditional? Wait, like wear or is it is he just does he just have a very strange fashion sense Magomed or, or Torvald Oh Magomed uh, Torvald is pretty pretty traditional in his gear with the the tr you know the country trunks and uh, whatnot I mean Magomed's uh, yeah. you know he's representing the Pakistan flag with his green blue and, and red uh, gear it's, it's certainly not a traditional uh, style of attire I, I admit it is more of a uh, you know 
a, a onesie or, or some sort of maybe super suit. <laughs> well, it definitely kind of gives off the onesie vibe. You have the one, but uh, he has his apron underneath. He's definitely also uh, been known to to don his you know his sambo attire, the the gi top and the uh, on, on the bottom. So how do you think his politics come into play here? I mean, he's in there with a socialist as a tag team partner, and uh, he's from Dagestan, correct? That is correct. He is, he is a, a Dagestan man. He's, he's, so uh, his I, they, states. they tend to be a little traditional, don't, don't they, compared to a, a really like a left-wing socialist like this? Wow. <laughs> he doesn't really. He doesn't. Yeah, he's he's a one-man socialist wrecking machine. I mean, I I feel like, uh, you know, Torvald, with his ridiculous, weird moves. Uh, uh, the, what was that? I don't know. It was incredible. But, uh, you know, he's going to at some point advocate for people who are homosexual or, tra you know, trans. And uh, Magomed is probably going to call for them to be killed. And uh, that might be a divisive thing for these guys. And they're going against the alt-right. These people know how to touch buttons like that, you know? It, they certainly... Uh have a lot to to talk about you know backstage and certain things can can come between them um but i, I definitely believe that in the face of fascism um, especially white christian fascism um and and torvald are definitely united on the front to destroy that entity uh, it's, it's much good to see it's good to see people united like that because there's so much divisiveness in the world right now, and uh, you know, it, you know, people like Federal Bell and, and Petrov are kind of, you know, to blame. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if, uh, you know, anybody can at this point. But these guys... No, uh, you know, he's, he's very focused on the things he's focused on, which are trying to contact Gawker about this P-tape that he claims to have, and... Uh, you know, it's been it's been over a year now, and, and nothing's come of it. You know, he really has to give that up and focus on his in-ring career instead of making a quick buck off of uh, a bankrupt entity. Wow! Wow! With the the big Petrov KGB bottom. <clears throat> yeah, but you know what? He's not the legal man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, very, these guys... I'm surprised that Federal Bell, uh, Federal Bell took that beheader uh, axe kit from Magomed and, you know, basically got back up and... <laughs> He's just showing off his athletic prowess, I think. He's showing he's got cardio for days. Wow, the big, the big Phoenix splash, and then, you know, Torvald... <laughs> Torvald just doesn't know what he's doing. You know, he, he's not... He's, he's been known as the Teddy Hart of socialism at times. <laughs> <clears throat> he, he likes to just do big moves and lay down for a while. Like... <laughs> I, I, I mean, we've seen four Phoenix... 
<laughs> Almost in a row. It's uh <laughs> <laughs> I like the Mega Mud. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> this is. Oh no. Oh, the power of socialism. <laughs> he's, he's, he's trying to get a locker up chant going, and nothing, nothing's happening. Yeah, I Petrov needs to tag his partner. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you know, and you have to wonder if all really athletic moves are starting to wear down. Uh, you know, what's his name here, Torvald? You know, he's been doing some pretty big moves. He's not, he's not reserving anything. You know, it's never been one for a, a psychology or you know pacing or anything of that nature. It's <laughs> true. Wow. That's, I, that, that, that's never been 100% confirmed. That, wow. You know, Pe Petrov, low blow and then salutes the flag and then takes this insane power bomb. But, you know, like... Petrov, he brings it right back to him. It's he's not gonna take this shit. You gotta wonder what's going through their minds right now. I mean, there's there's so much on the line. This tag team title, while they are the first tag team champions, uh, it's still it's very prestigious. Uh, this is. This is this is an important title. This is the number two title in this in this league, and it's. <laughs> yeah, and, and then let's let's remember too that uh, the the impetus here is that these guys want to hold on to these titles and they want the other member of their team, Ichabod, to hold the world title, they want to dominate. They want they want uninterrupted television. Twitch twitch time, you know? They want they want to be on camera. They want to be saying terrible things. Uh, you know, this is uh, they think it's their world right now and that this is the new punk rock. You know, I, 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 Torvald is just really tired, I think, from all of the, the flips that he's done. Yeah, Magomed clearly looking for some double team opportunities for Torvald. <laughs> just too exhausted to step inside the, the ring. You know, socialism and uh, whatever whatever you want to call the, the system of government. Oof. My god. You know? I mean, that's... Yeah, Federal Bell proves to be the ultimate tag team partner once again. That big spinning back fist, that's one of Petrov's favorite moves to use in kickboxing. And he, you know, pulled it off here. I mean, David Bixenspan gave this uh, a solid four point, like, you know eight stars or something like that. It's uh, pretty incredible. I don't know. Uh, Murph, Murph doesn't go to bed. And it's two, two title matches back to back. Murph giving it a half star. He was not impressed with that tag team title fight. Uh, a foreign contingent in the in the crowd. Huh. 
Not sure what they're cheering for, but they seem adamant about something. Let's hand this over to Hey, uh, what the what? I got, I got no fuck. What the fuck? Uh, I, I, I don't know who the fuck he is. <laughs> He's some guy, uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about this guy. He's just a good guy. He's got a, got a penis, you know? I mean,. God damn it, cheesesteak, you didn't tell me he was a murderer. Ah, I gotta fight a murderer? You know what that means? A murderer? A mur uh, 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 No, no, no. I gotta... What the fuck? Who, who booked this sh shit? Who made... Uh, God damn it. I give up. I, I gotta go beat some murderer ass or something. I... Ah. I say good luck to to Hira Sarim and I hope he doesn't get murdered. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Hero, without it, you know, he's got some really thick chest here right now. I, I'm really impressed with that. His, his family, okay. but <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like uh, this is—I I don't even know who cool in this. Uh, w you know, Wim Nyman is uh, very well. He's also loud. He's, uh, you know, he's a very respectable Dutch kickboxer. Uh, Chucky Murphy is uh, well. I don't know. He's a uh, he's a tough guy who looks like Chuck Liddell. And, uh, you know, we know Hero is that, uh, colorful when it comes to his commentary, but, uh, Alex Thompson's murdered people. Murphy had a, had a good run in the original world title tournament, won, won the belt. Um, there were allegations of uh, performance enhancing substances. Um, he voluntarily uh, decided to eat only. To cycle to, off, right? To take only uh, water and uh, 50 grams of rice a day to, to prove uh, that he was clean and he. Uh, of that as he lost that uh, that triple threat match. Yeah. Uh, with Ick in discussion. Um, eating a more, a more healthy diet. Uh, so hopefully he can he can perform up to his abilities again. You know, if we check his Twitter, uh, the most recent thing that he tweeted at, uh, looks like about an, just under an hour ago, uh, was, fuck at SCFL highlights, gonna beat this cuck in to a pulp tonight, hashtag MAGA. So,
So, uh, you know, that seems to be where he's at. We already know that he's thrown a uh, stuffed raccoon at the champion tonight. Uh, this guy is a little unhinged. But, uh, I, I mean, you know, I'm looking at his Twitter right now. Uh, the other day he was bidding on an SEN uh, Super Nintendo Classic on eBay when uh, the person canceled his order because of his uh, username. You know, he's he's not a man who's focused on anything. Uh, actually, you know, he would have to focus on these men in the ring here too, you know? Uh, they're, you know, if he were to win the world title somehow, one of these guys might be a challenger. And uh, instead, he's focused on uh, eBay, and uh, I mean, there's some really horrific things on uh, <laughs> Twitter feed, but uh, I feel like that's just who he is. You gotta feel like uh, it's a little difficult for him. He usually has cheesesteak, you know, at ringside to kind of help him out or egg him on. And uh, he's out here alone because of the stipulations of this match. Uh, I think that plays in pretty big for both him and Philly to where they're used to having some family, familial, familial support during their matches, at least if it's moral support. They don't cheat or anything. I mean, we're using we're using the Owen voice here because uh, this is this is bad. A murderer just just murdered somebody. I mean, well, we don't. I, he's he's being he's being carted out. Uh, you know, people at the our mediocre uh, technicians are going to be looking into this and trying to help him, but. Uh, I'm not sure what to say. I think we need... I mean, I think Mike really needs to evaluate if uh, Alex Thompson is the kind of person that needs to remain contracted to Super Chat Fight League in any capacity. You, you simply put him in, in you know you, you throw multiple people at him and just burn up that those the, the fights on that contract and until he's gone I think is what has to happen yeah I, I mean I mean but then you know we've completed qualification fights now and that means that the on our next event Boxing Bianca will fight Algorithm Schneider, uh, and he'll fight Rhett Middle and Alex Thompson, and uh, God bless these men, they have to fight a murderer. I mean, Murph brings up a pretty good point of uh, what if he's the only person who can dispose of Ichabod? <laughs> you know, uh, it, it being a would it be okay if his politics weren't terrible, or it, it, you know, like he I, he he seems apolitical. He's just a working man. <laughs> yeah. Heard his uh, his wife because she was a staunch Trump supporter. We don't know. Don't know. This is, yeah. Alex Thompson. Alex, Alex Thompson won an exploding barbed wire tournament. Uh, he defeated Chuchai, Train Mutai Jim, 
and Puncho Baggins uh, and Bike Bianca was so disgusted by the outcome, he quickly sent Xylophonist and, and Lou out to, uh, quote unquote, handle things. And they dispatched what? Thompson in another exploding barbed wire match to become the new number one contender. Bike forced Thompson to put his number one contendership up for grabs without even having a title fight. And uh, the, the, oh. the tag team quickly took the. Uh, you know? I, you gotta give credit to Zoning Zhang here. He already has let Lou bloodied up, and Xylophonist is in his street gear. He's wearing jeans with socks pulled over them and a white polo shirt. I mean, <laughs> this man is the definition of a nerd. And, uh... <laughs> like why would why would two men deserve this champion? Yeah, we, uh, we've been told that he's working on a jingle for the, like the opening theme of the song, uh, the show as well. But he's he's taking his time with it because he's so busy setting up the ring, cleaning the ring, finding light tubes, uh, dispatching. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the, you know the kind of you have to wonder if Bike was really thinking here because Zoning Zhang is perhaps the most loyal of all the Belly Ribbon teammates to Bike. He is so excited about just being on Team Belly Ribbon. He's got the big Belly Ribbon written on his arms. You know, he his tattoo of the Belly Ribbon is pretty big. He's proud of it. And Bike is punishing him by making him fight his cousin and this random community college kid. Oh, he did get. Did, did he win? Did he win the the eBay auction that Ichabod lost? Oh my god! Well, he is fighting two two men that kind of what men? Yeah, they, these two men that sort of equal the full person. <laughs> wow! Oh my god! And then, and then they're gonna have to go out there and clean quickly. <laughs> you know, one other of bikes messes. <laughs> yeah, but but at what point? Oh no! Yeah, at what point are these guys one of bikes messes? And that is, I think, the big question. It's gonna be a, a woman that swallowed a fly situation where he's gonna send like three guys out to take care of these two. He might, he might, he might try and con contract the the Supreme oh. family. The su I, I don't know. There's a lot of bad blood there still. Not terrible, but you know enough. A and you have to wonder if 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 Zoning Zhang can make it to the explosion. I don't think he survives. <laughs> These guys are doing a number on him, and. Uh, yeah, he doesn't. Oh, you know, just as you said that, he threw Zoning Zhang into the fire, and it, you know, forced an explosion. He's instantly regretful, though. He's he's begging forgiveness. That guilt yeah. is power. Oh. Wow. You say they don't. Okay, there, there's a cover finally. I, I was gonna say they don't want to do this, but there's there's not many covers going on. Yeah, they, you, well, you know, it feel like they could have ended a while ago, but then uh, they, they couldn't have because they're just, they're not strong men, you know? <laughs> it's 
<laughs> like, Letlu is going full speed here because he doesn't know how to do anything else, and he's not barely getting two counts. Wow. I believe so. It might be a... Well, you know what, Zoning Zhang has taken so much damage that there's no way he survived. The only way, the only hope he has is that everybody gets knocked out. And uh, I, I don't think that uh, Xylophone has taken much damage at all. He's wearing... <laughs> Look at him! He keeps begging off, like... He's wearing a white shirt. He doesn't want it to get covered in blood. He, you know, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and most uh, people don't say. want to explode. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, let loose seems like he's getting into this. <sighs> he's really a phone is like grinding his knee into this man's face. He's not a he's not worried about his genes, uh, apparently. He looks surprised though. Well, uh, you know, I, I don't blame him. Why would you you don't want this to be these guys? <laughs> He really is, uh, but you have to wonder, you know, if he's holding on for too long, he's going to get really hard. <clears throat> yeah, this is... I'm, I'm not, I don't want to, I, I don't want to look, but I have to because it's my job. Oh boy. Yeah, everybody's hurt. <laughs> and all the while, Zoni Zhang is just laying there, unmoving. And yeah, they had to call it. They had to call it. They had to call that. That was. It took him 16 minutes to beat one man. Ah, <laughs> uh, wow. I mean, this is a battle of the Goliath. No, this is... I mean, this is Ichabod against discussion. This has happened multiple times. Uh, you know, it's kind of been one of those things to where Ichabod hasn't, wasn't able to defeat discussion during his legendary... and uh, <clears throat> push square to get rid of somebody. Uh, these... Yeah, you can you can get rid of people from that screen by pushing. <clears throat> okay. Um, you know these guys they have a very rich history, and you know that history was expounded upon when uh, Ichabod rightfully won the title. Many thought, and then Mr. Bianca, the referee, uh, said the match didn't understand the rules of the match, and that it had to keep going. Uh, 
I, I believe that might be a good solution, uh, Murph, to have uh, a showdown between Let Lu and Xyla crown the one true champion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clean yourselves up. <laughs> this is the world title. Champion coming up. Yeah. Champion. Yeah, he's, uh, he's not wearing the title either. He wants to, you know, it's already in the possession of the Mr. Bianca. Uh, wow, this is uh, this is a big deal. These guys, uh, these guys have a crazy history, and I really feel that uh, it could go either way. I think discussion might have an edge, but, you know, it could... Yeah, Ichabod got in his head earlier with the uh, the, the raccoon stun. Right. Yeah, but you know, uh, Ichabod, where is his head at? You know, like I said earlier, I mean, his Twitter feed reads of a very confused and strange man. You know, he uh, he's retweeting <clears throat> stuff about. Uh, the, the first lady, he's retweeting stuff about locking Hillary up. Uh, there's a horrific story on his Twitter from his Thanksgiving uh, where he claims he was up early uh, on Friday because he was pissed off and needed a run. He was enjoying a MAGA Thanksgiving until his sister's quote unquote dipshit cuck husband Ron started bashing Trump. Uh, Ichabod then called him a fucking quote cuck and uh, Ron got pissy said if he was a cuck to prove it, and then Ichabod, and I, this is a direct quote, pulled my dick out and said I'd fuck Betsy right there at the table, and she started crying. Uh, no, that is his sister? Uh, uh, you know, then she... <laughs> well, I mean, both these guys are... Pieces of shit for different reasons. Um. <laughs> it's true. The, no, I, I, this is these. Both these men. Both these men are terrible. These are not good. I, I mean, discussion is a greedy man. He's you know he needs to hold all, every title. He inserts himself in every situation, warranted or unwarranted. Uh, he, no. <clears throat> no. I mean he's. He for gold, he, he entered himself into the Sharia Law Division, which is clearly for lower level fighters, and, and took hold of that belt just, just because he, he wanted more fame and attention on himself, and didn't he doesn't realize when, why people are upset at him for, for doing things like that. He, he, in his mind, he's a hero. In, in the mind of many, he's sort of a villain. Whereas... is a respectable guy right he night you know he uh, honestly he owns the hat him and him and betsy own the house that ichabod lives in and so it's it's really ichabod is biting the hand that feet yeah uh, you know we'll we'll work on getting him in here uh you know this is uh, this has been back and forth these guys are on equal footing, you know, when it comes to the skill level. Uh, but like I said, Ichabod is pretty distractible. Uh, and he's pretty d detestable. I mean, trying to have sex with his sister? I don't really, <laughs> you know? What kind of man is this? Uh, you know, discussion might, might have fabricated a, a story about getting his lip ripped off or something, but, you know, he's he's not a bad... He, he doesn't post Nazi stuff on Twitter, you know? Like, that's... 
you know, this is where we're at in 2017. You know, like this man's not a Nazi, so he's not a he's he's a good guy. A lot of people I mean, do. I, I, I dislike, well, Ichabod being a piece of shit inside and outside of the cage. He's detestable politics and, and personal behavior. <clears throat> he always goes for uh, front kicks to the to the groin uh, at the start of rounds, uh, and and just constantly throughout the fight because super chat referees are, are easily distracted. Yeah. I mean, well, that's 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 still up for debate. But. I think the most things in the spirit, world, which is why they're so distracting. I feel like it's, it's pretty it's bad. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's too close to call. Just like the election was for a while. <laughs> before, before the terrible Trump pulled away, you know that's. We might have a moment like that here tonight. <clears throat> yeah. He's just standing in front of him, holding that weapon. It's, uh, it's really something. Spike is... He's not doing paperwork there, but, oh, He could be. He's just watching as a fan, I guess. I, I you know, I think he's there. In, paperwork, but uh, I think he's there in case he, members of the alt right try to storm the ring and you know get involved. Which I can't blame him. I don't know. I mean, when he when he landed that uh, avalanche belly, he did land on the chair. <laughs> Whew. You know, he's always looking for the cheap victory. I mean, that could have stolen the world title. You know, it's noteworthy that Ekabot's really trying to work with that mid. better if there were more oh my god oh my god wow he stole it he just stole it my god rightfully hates it. Yeah, I, I was just about to say a discussion uh, kept getting caught with that roll-up. He didn't uh, he didn't recognize the pattern and go for a different uh, Ichabod just kept going for it until it hit. Oh. I'm I, I don't even know it. Hey. That's uh that's big. <laughs> Five minutes. Yeah, let's make these guys hurt. I'm I'm not even sure what to say anymore. That was
Yeah. Right? It might be. I mean, that's podcast. That might be Alex Thompson. Might be our hope to save us from Ichabod. Uh, you know, he's uh, <laughs> he's uh, as animated as. I He, I, I like that he defeated Discussion Davis, the greatest of all time, and then immediately... I, I like that he immediately, he immediately goes after Bike Bianca because, because he was ringside watching, you know? Incredible. I think, I think, I think, I think Bike's just stunned. Bike's, Bike didn't think. It's 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 a lot like uh, when uh, everyone's getting unplugged and it's just not like this, not like this. Well, that's all he's got to be thinking right now. Well, he he, in a fit of anger, forced his cousin to to fight his partner, Let Lou, to to determine who's actually the hardcore champion. Uh, you have to feel like even though there is a contender. Uh, Zoning Zhang deserves another shot at his getting his title back at some point. He has a heart condition. This is not good for him. I mean, this is, this is literally a, a case of the mega powers exploding. <laughs> the at least it's not the. Yeah. You know, it is. It is no nut November. We should point this out. A lot, a lot of testosterone. Uh, you know, actually, uh, Wim suffered a pretty severe concussion. Kind of a fitting way, I have to admit. Uh, he suffered a severe, severe con bad it was. We probably won't see him for... Wow. Right. Wow. Good night. Thank you for joining us, everybody. <laughs>